breathing, <coughs> exhale fully into the water, um, good body and head position, um, eye and ear in the water when breathing, look slightly forward, um, eyes when breathing. What's the key in terms of head position and um, when you say to someone, look forward, what do they all do? Until they head up, lift it. So what, what do you guys need to do when you say that to people? Use your eyes. Oh, Use your eyes. Not your head. And that will happen all the time. Everyone we do it to it happens. And we, we, by the way, run a very intensive program where we, we teach this and it's a very basic level. And, and we delve deep, deep into this stuff. And um, the outcomes are always the same. People always make the same mistakes. So, yeah, it's certainly important that you make them aware. Look at their eyes, not their head. Kick from the hips. Again, it's something I touch touch on. It's not something that I make the foundation of any type of learning. Um, elevate shoulder, high elbow recovery, <coughs> pretty straightforward. Um, shoulder and hip rotation. I don't even know. What's that say? <coughs> <coughs> Alright, yeah, so think about it as, as twisting on an axis. Okay. A lot of you have probably heard of the total immersion program and probably been exposed to it. A lot of you probably heard of the pop-up drill um, and what we will call um, flat planes from it, where we're removing any rotation through the body. There's a couple of schools of thought on all of this, all this stuff, okay? Rotating through your stroke is certainly powerful if um, you don't have flat spots in your stroke. If you've got big gaping flat spots, and by I mean you're rotating through your stroke and reaching out too far, and that's causing this big flat spot where you're not getting any full momentum, remove it. You don't necessarily have to have a rotation in your strokes from the vast. Okay, and we do change our stroke based on who we're swimming with and when we're swimming well, and I guess the conditions as well. So just keep that in mind. All right. The general rule with rotation though is that um, you're changing the angle of your shoulders. Okay, so when you're in prone position, so swimming, it looks a bit like that. Because in this position, what am I doing with my back? Turning it, and what am I engaging? Relax. Relax. So from here, the tendency is to do what? Drop your elbow. What do you engage when you drop your elbow? Forearm flexors. Forearm flexors, bicep, deltoid. Small muscle groups. Small muscle groups. So the mechanics of, of rotation in the water are really important if they're taught correctly. The problem is most, most of the coaches that we, we talk with can't teach it. They go, yeah, you've got to rotate through your stroke. You go, why not? Because you're longer in the water. But they're forgetting to let the athlete in the water know why we're doing that. It's typically so we can increase the length of our stroke and engage our back. Because that action by default engages the lats. We all agree with that biomechanism, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, really important stuff. And all swimmers, or good swimmers, um, if you look at any footage of a decent swimmer in the water and they're in a streamlined position, what, what muscle do you see bulging? The lat muscle. Look at all triathletes, they do this. What do you see? <coughs> Nice. <laughs> 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 Alright, um, pull over the body, high elbow blues, strong push the thigh, yeah, breathing bilaterally. Strong push the thigh, um, good way of teaching that. Does anyone understand what part of the stroke we're talking about when we talk about that? Yeah, really good way of teaching it, and, and one of the tricks we use is we take references from people's general life. So what action would that be similar to? Basketball. Basketball. Think, think a bit more specific to sports people and, and stuff that we all do. Who's been in the gym? What action is it similar to now? Like a tricep so push down. down. Everyone who's done a tricep push down or hasn't been exposed to, is that fair to say? Or at least 90%. If they haven't, how do you teach it? Take them into the gym. Sorry? Take them into the gym. Take them into the gym. Pull down. <coughs> and inside the pool, no elbows touch in, get out of the way. That's the back of their stroke. Okay. Do this 20 times, guess what I'll get? Fatigue. Fatigue, I'll feel what? Feel like so. Then you say, or associate them to you with the water and say, look for or search for that feeling. And they get in the water, it has a new meaning for them now. So what we've done as coaches is really increase the time it takes to learn. So we've reduced it massively. So they're Bang, 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 understand it. Next to their strokes change through a few simple strategies, yeah. So we call that a reference for performance. And the way I teach it is just like that. So I would have people on the pool deck doing that, getting out of the water, a little bit of 
associated to it, get him in the water, get them to do as part of a drill, so not necessarily swim, so maybe a catch up. And you watch the drive they get through their stroke from straight away within the space of 10 seconds. And then the lights come on, they go, oh wow, I can't believe it's that easy. Okay, and it's just because the framework was set up for them. Does everyone kind of understand that? Mm -hmm. Has anyone thought of doing that kind of stuff before? No? Okay, and that's, you guys, by the way, at the norm. This is not complex, I don't think, I just think people haven't thought of it. You know, your job as coaches, and my opinion, is to, to think about this stuff, educate people, yeah? And that's, I guess, why we're here. All right. Okay, so relationship between hips and head. Um, head up equals hips down. Hips down, insufficient body position. Um, hips down, non-streamlined. Flutter kick, uh, water between hairline and ears. Let's quickly go into a few of these things for you. So, water line. Okay. Where, where should their head be now in relationship to the water line of their body? <coughs> two thirds away down. Two thirds away down. Okay, so let, let's now go back a few steps. You're trying to teach this. How are you going to give someone a reference for this? Because everyone's different. Where should their head be and how are you going to tell them? Okay, so what mechanisms have we got for part of teaching? Reference. Streamline. Okay. Sideways. So, how can they now check that their head's in kind of a neutral position? By neutral, I mean in line with my body. Can someone stand next to them? What you say? Touch your knees on the Such a simple thing. Give them a trigger. And we call them triggers. So I make them start on the pull deck or on the side and say, we're going in the streamline, your streamline looks like this. One of the key triggers you're looking for is that your ears are touching your bicep. If your ears don't touch your bicep, you don't start with a streamline. And everyone goes, yeah, that makes sense. And they push off and their head's in the right position. Okay, so the next evolution of that is head position in neutral, touching bicep, start of the stroke. That's how it works. So you give them a reference throughout the entire start of their stroke about where the head position is going to be. You correct the head position. What happens to here? Okay, it just come up. Pops up. So you've got them buoyant. So you've, you've just corrected two massive things that most people don't get. Okay? If you make them buoyant, okay, what invariably happens to the length of their stroke at the bottom? It's longer because your body's not in the way and your head's not in the way. Spot on. <coughs> it gets longer by default because the hips aren't dragging in the water. Does everyone get that? So what we've done now in the space of 30 seconds is re literally redesign the way someone, in particular adults <laughs> or children, yeah. swim. And it has a massive, massive impact because if you can get someone streamlined correctly and get them off the wall, Okay, they're probably going to move two or three feet further just because of the streamlined position in, this, in, in a push-off. And that's how you would articulate this to people and show them or illustrate it, I guess. Does that make sense? Okay. So if the hips are in the yep. right position, so the, the hips drop, yep. when you push through, is it, it's more pushing down? So your water levels, the water surface is there. Yes. So they're pushing down because the hips are there or they're still pushing. If your hips, if your hips are up, mm -hmm. you're pushing that longer straight. Yep. If your hips are down, you're actually pushing. Yeah, yeah, okay. If your hips are down, what it tends to do, because a lot of people don't have mobility this high in their stroke, mm -hmm. okay? most, most of you guys, if I said to do this, you have problems. Okay? So when your hips are down, if we're in prone now, it's like that. So if your hips are up, it's a lot easier to put, you put your hand there, isn't it? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what it does is it frees people up just through their lack of mobility, because you can bet adults in particular, what's very tight? They're up thoracic. Yeah, massively tight. So when in the water, their, their streamline is often like this. That's the best you're going to get. Okay, so you need to identify that. And what do you say to these people when you've seen that they can't even get in this position? <coughs> Provided we go up to water. Yeah, how, and how would you do that? <coughs> I just set out indicators that you know, prove that they're on their way. So, you know, sort of get them to sort of you know, feel their ears if they can't quite. I've got one, one step better for that, and you're right on the right track. <coughs> Give them my physio's number. You know, go get health insurance, look at that, make sure you're covered. 
go down and get your back released and get it released over the next six months and get a strategy <coughs> simple things like laying on some sort of a, a pole. So yeah, just, those foam rollers for your ITVs, should you put them lying down? Mm -hmm. and, uh, up there. Again, that's you being a very professional coach now because you're not just looking at um, the, the symptoms, you're looking at the root cause. Yeah. Okay, and the root cause of them not being able to spin is quite often musculoskeletal. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, the, same, the people that we make these changes with have massive, massive changes over a year. Huge. They sit in the water completely differently. And when they feel better about themselves in the water, particularly as, as Iron Man, what happens to the rest of their legs? Well, they improve as well. Bloody oath. Right. Because they're a happier person, a happier athlete. But wouldn't that also tie into if they're more efficient, they're using less calories, well, less done. energy, and everything? They're not as stressed out. And well, yeah, more yes. relaxed. Yeah, 100%. Mm. It's good stuff when you think about it at this level, isn't it? It, it really is powerful because you're doing things that most people just don't get and, and don't care about. Okay, and I see <coughs> swimming teachers all the time teaching these drills, teaching them wrong, to be frank, and not looking at the why they're swimming incorrectly. Okay, whether they don't have the knowledge, I'm not sure, but it frustrates me. So don't be that way. Think about you know what you can do and how you get the information across to the people that you're teaching. We've gone down the road of putting stuff up on YouTube and writing up um, theoretical um, information underneath our clips. So we put up a, a YouTube clip and it's a drill and then we give the theory behind it. Okay, so when we teach it, we then go go to our YouTube channel, have a look at this drill in real time done correctly. So we're giving them a reference for how the change is going. And that's the level of detail that we're trying to bring to this stuff. It's not just give me your money, um, go and do an hour set. We want people to be better from this. So we're using everything available. Yeah, so again, go down that road because it works. All right. Um, what happens when your heels break a water surface? Get a splash. Splash? What happens when you get a splash? Waste, Waste energy. energy. Waste energy. Um, no drive through the water because? Don't have the tension against it. Bubbles in the water? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so keep their heels under the water, make them boil. When you correct the head position, what do you have to, what do you have to correct straight away after that? Feet position because of the swimming. Spot on. First thing that's going to happen is they're going to just kick out of the water. So correct buoyancy, be aware you have to correct yours. So you just simply drop it, make them aware, it takes 10 seconds. It'll change by this one. This is a pretty good example, yeah? Um, reasonably good. Not what we're looking for. This is actually a drill, by the way, too, guys. So um, you can kind of see <coughs> in my crude articulation. Um, I guess that's a bit better. So the top one, the head's down, thumbs above the water. Okay, your rep or their reference for buoyancy is typically when you thumb out of the water and you're splashing. You do that, give them that minute. Once they can identify with it, they need to understand when it's not happening. So they need to understand the difference between being born and not being born. Okay? okay, so give that to them. And, and they will be able to, uh, I guess when they're talking, you say, yeah, yeah, I can feel my bum was under the water. And, and you get them used to knowing that because that's the lead associated to the head. Um, we talk about that roll through an axis. This is a great picture of it. Okay, so you can see what she's doing really well here. Um, hands flat, the engagement of a lat. Yeah. Any questions on that? Matt, is it just as simple as putting the head down, 